What's up people, Dobbs and Wolves this right here and welcome to another rank video. Now, you guys have now voted one of my favourite horror franchises of all time. Resident Evil. Now, let you guys know, I have every single Resident Evil game known to man. And I mean every single one of them. I'm not going to say out loud that every single version from a different type of, type of console, that's like the Master Collection. I'm talking about every single number, every single spin-off, um, canon games and everything. So there's like 24 games. I know there's 25, but I'm not counting one of them because it's the god-awful, it is the worst, nobody plays it, if they do, they're definitely high on something. And that is the, um, and that is Operation Corp. It's god awful. Just saying that out loud now. Um, it's not an actual physical game. You can only download it on the PlayStation Store. I think you can as well on the Xbox Store. I don't think you can on the Switch. But yeah, that's all I'm going to say for it. So there's 24 games to say out loud, people. This is going to be cut down into two episodes, like like, like I did with Final Fantasy, because it's quite long. Um, the five senses for Resident Evil. Number one, the story. How good is the story? Number two, the look. Does it look like a horror game? Does it look too mellow for what it's supposed to be? Was it good for its time and does it hold up to this day of age? Number three, the controls. How good are the controls? Are they smooth? Are they clunky? Are they not responsive? Are they responsive? Number four, the soundtrack. Now, it comes to soundtrack for Resident Evil games. They've got to sound like it's horror or action. There can't be any romance music or anything like that. It's got to sound proper like a horror game or something that's quite action -y. And number five, the feel. Does the game actually feel like a Resident Evil slash horror game? If it does, great. If it doesn't, well, the feeling drops it down for there. So, there's 24 games. I'm going to try and speed from 24 to 17 very quickly on, on what I think about them. And then as I go along, they'll go slow and slow and slow until the next part, part two, I'll be in more in depth for number 10 all the way up to number one. So that being said, let's get it started. Cue the Resident Evil music. And let's get this underway. Whew. Number 24 is Mercenaries 3D on the Nintendo 3DS. But to be honest, there's no story. Just point it out there. The look, it's good for a Mercenaries game. Don't mind it. Controls, sometimes were a little bit clunky. Even on the 3DS game, it was very, very clunky. The soundtrack, it's just like the Mercenary games. It's quite upbeat and a bit energetic. But there's nothing really anything about it. The feeling... There's no feeling into it. It's just like a standard mini game, like any of the other mercenary games. I don't like it as much. It's my least favourite, to be honest. Number 23, Gaiden. Now, Gaiden is a Game Boy game, so it's a very rare one, just to let you guys know. Um, the story, story could definitely be a lot more in depth and a lot more in detail. But what can you tell for a, a Game Boy Advance, for a Game Boy Color game? Um, the look for the game itself, it's quite nice for what it is as a Game Boy Color game. Um, the zombies look good. Um, the actual looks of the characters, Barrett, Leon, they look really, really good for their time of age. Controls. Uh, controls, um, for the back of the day, they were alright. Not as good at all, to be honest. But the one thing that screwed me a lot is when you're shooting your guns to the zombies. The... Um, the, you have to literally shoot every time in the middle. If you shoot on the sides, you, you're nowhere near. It, to me, it feels like an old, old version of um, Undertale. The way you're fighting that. So, you know when you're fighting Sans and everything? It's like that, but way, way worse. Soundtrack. It, uh, soundtrack, uh, yeah, not really good. <laughs> the feeling. Now, the feeling is quite odd, it, to be honest. It doesn't feel like a Resident Evil game. It feels like... A standard where do I go game not idea what you're doing I know a lot of people say that Resident Evil is a where do I go game but I mean where do you go like meaning where the hell do you really go let's literally when you start the game you're stuck in the second you don't really know where you're going so yeah that's quite annoying number 22 Resident Evil Survivor now on the PS1 like I'm saying the story is so bad. It's really bad. I I know it's canon because you, you have a relationship that's um, a friend of your a friend of yours, which is Leon S. Kennedy. But I don't want to spoil the story for you at all, though. People, like I said, I'm trying to make it out there so you guys know exactly what it's all about. Uh, Survivor is pretty much um, Joe in the outbreak of Raccoon City. Uh, you're about to escape, but you're stuck there. 
to be honest. And uh, pretty much it is a first person game, so you don't see your body, it's just literally what your eyes see. Um, for what it was, for a Resident Evil game on the PS1, because it had the same graphics as Resident Evil 2 and 3, which were great, but the um, controls, super clunky sometimes, um, the shooting bit was a bit of an issue. The soundtrack, to be honest, the soundtrack could have been way better. Mostly about at least 60% of the game, there's no music. It's just eeriness, hearing dogs barking or birds flapping their wings. There's not really hardly any any music until like maybe like near the end of the game. Um, the feeling of it um, do, definitely does feel like a Resident Evil game. It really does. Um, it has all the elements of Resident Evil 2 and 3. Um, but still, I did not like how they went their hands on it. it I like we already know that they have done a first a first person game of Resident Evil before, as you guys know. They did Resident Evil 7. Um, but for the back of the time, I don't think it was it was the right time for it to be made at that time. Be it. That's what I'm saying. Number 21, Resident Evil Survivor 2. It was a sequel. Now this one, again, pretty much they made it way better. It was a PS2 game. The look was awesome. It had the feeling of um, Cold Veronica X. Um, the controls were way better. The soundtrack was better as well. Then pretty much there was music all the way through the game. It had all the same soundtracks as Resident Evil Cold Veronica X. But the story was the main thing about it. It is really, really shit. And pretty much I don't think there's really is a story in it. Um... If you want a story of Code Veronica, play for Veronica X. That's all I'm saying. Number number 20, Resident Evil Operation Raccoon City. Now, the story there is quite confusing because it's pretty much mixing up with the canon stuff to the stuff that ain't canon. So, yeah, it's pretty much what would have happened if Leon, Jill, Claire, Wesker met up with the Operation Raccoon City squad of Umbrella. So, um... Yeah, it's um, it's not really canon, but it is. It's hard to understand if you haven't played it. To me, it did not feel like a Resident Evil game. It really didn't. It, the looks, it looked like a Resident Evil. It didn't feel like a Resident Evil. To me, it felt like a mismatch, a mishmash of Gears of War and um, and old classic third-person shooter of uh, Medal of Honor really really but in really bad graphics to be honest and for a ps3 game they could have done better but to be honest i didn't think it was that really good for feeling of a resident evil game the soundtrack is solid the story like i said it's a bit of a mishmash it's whether you follow it or you don't i follow it to the end and still there is a lot of potholes that should have been answered but you can't do anything about that number 19 operation um re number 19 resident evil outbreak one now this is a massive kick up now. It's pretty much um it's pretty much almost fixed cameras, but the camera actually follows you. Um you get to play as different characters. That's the thing I like about it. You play as different type of characters with their different stories and um they all have different type of jobs back in the Raccoon City. It's really good. You get to play as a bartender, a maid, a police officer, a washed up police officer, a security guard. A lot of different type of characters. The look, it looked like Resident Evil as a civilian. It was really good. Controls, a little bit clunky. Um, the um, storing weapons was an issue for me because I hated it because I like storing weapons in boxes. Pretty much, there's not really any boxes unless you really do find them. Uh, sometimes you have to drop the weapons and then change to another character to go and pick up that weapon instead so you do not lose that type of item or weapon. Uh, soundtrack, very good for what it was for the PS2 game. Uh, the feel felt like Resident Evil. It really did. It left you in uttermost disbelief on thinking that you're going to survive. Because it's pretty much what it is about this about Outbreak 1. It's literally non-stop, you need to survive. If you don't survive, it's game over. So yeah, that's my number 19. Number 18, Resident Evil 6, one of the main games. Now, a lot of people understand this. Resident Evil 6 is not a good game. Yeah, I understand that. The story, I did like the story though. I love the story. I know it didn't feel like a Resident Evil. I know it did not feel like a Resident Evil. I know that for sure. Did it look like a Resident Evil game? No, it did not feel like, it didn't feel like and it didn't look like one. The soundtrack was awesome. The controls were amazing because it had the same controls as Resident Evil 5 and Resident Evil 4. And also the remakes of uh, 2 and 3. 
So that was a good boost for me. But like I said, the story and everything, it felt like a zombie outbreak game, not a Resident Evil game. A zombie outbreak game meets James Bond. It felt like that. And I actually do like that quite a bit. I know a lot of people hate it, but for me, I actually do enjoy it quite a lot. But not as much as the rest of them, if you guys want to know. Number 17, Resident Evil Revelation 2. Now, there's a people that you love this game or you hate it. I actually do like it, but I don't hate it. I don't love it, but I do like it. Story is very straightforward. You're pretty much playing as Claire Redfield or Barrett, which is the first time in many years you get to play as Barrett. Which is awesome, because I actually do like Barrett. You know, you almost turn into a Jill Sandwich. <laughs> but to be honest though, it's very good because you have Barrett's daughter in it, which is the first time seeing her. You have this little girl who you control that can see these monsters. They're not zombies, if you guys want to know, there's something completely different. But it's some type of new virus that can that's connected to your fear. The look, it looked like Resident Evil. It looked like a good Resident Evil game. The feel like Resident Evil. The soundtrack, I did not like the soundtrack at all. I find it quite boring. When there was a cinematic, I listened to it, and then after that, there's no soundtrack. I put my music on, so that's the thing. Control, smooth as anything. Very good. Number 16, Resident Evil Dead Aim. Now, this is, once again, this is a first-person shooter, but also a third-person game. They put both elements in it, which is a very good idea. The story definitely could have been better. It felt like a Resident Evil game, even though you're on a freaking ship in the whole entire game, which is quite new. It's not in a city, it's not in a I mean, forest, it's not in anywhere. It's in a fucking boat. <laughs> um, it felt like a Resident Evil game because it's pretty much, it's very dark in the whole entire game. The zombies come out of any anywhere, you, you do hear them as well. Soundtrack was awesome and the controls were quite smooth as it was. To me as well though, when it came to the feel, it felt like a bit like Silent Hill as well. So it was like a mixed match of Final of, um, Resident Evil and Silent Hill put together, which I do really do do like. And I definitely say to you guys, give that a game, give that a go if you do find it. Number 15, Resident Evil 5. And once again, a game that's known for its memes. I like punching the rock. <laughs> oh, the story is straightforward. It's good. It's a story about the Ouroboros virus in at South Africa. It was new, it was fresh, there was nothing about Raccoon City or anything. It was a new area, new new country. You get to play as Chris Redfield and a new girl named Char um, Sheva. Um, story about, um, it's pretty much a story about Wesker, the Uruboros virus and about the missing of Jill Valentine. I'm not going to spoil it for you guys really, but that's pretty much simplified on what the stories are really about. And it's a very good in it in my eyes. And yes, I do like the end, the final boss fight too. I know a lot of people hate that boss fight, but I love it. Um, the look, yeah, it did not look like a Resident Evil game. I understand that, but it felt like a Resident Evil game. It really did in my eyes. Not in the beginning of the game. It did not feel like it at all. It felt like a standard, like, a standard shooter's game in third person. But when you get into the, um, like, second, second to last areas, like... When, it, when, the de when the day started to go really, really dark, that's when it started to become like Resident Evil. When it was in daytime, it didn't feel like it at all. But when it started getting dark, it was it felt like Resident Evil. Um, controls were smooth, and so was the soundtrack. It was great, in my eyes. Number 14, Resident Evil 1, the original. Yes, the, the original and remake are going in separate numbers because they have to. The original, you can't treat the original Resident Evil 1 like trash because it was the pinnacle of Resident Evil. It's how it all started. Yes, the acting is terrible. Wow, what a mansion. Um, the story, it's simple. I'm not going to spoil it for you because it's quite simple enough. You're in a, you're in a um, mansion. You're trying to find out where these zombies are coming from and who is a traitor. That's what I'm saying. Controls, so freaking complicated and super clunky because of the fixed cameras. And plus, to go forward was to click forward. Even though the couch is looking at you this way, if you click forward, it's walking this way, not that way. So it's like, oh, you have to get, you have to get used to the fixed cameras. And it's, and it, to me, to this very day, it's still struggling for me to, as well because I forget the fixed cameras a lot. And yeah, I do wish that the old controls were abolished because that I don't like them at all. Soundtrack, yeah. 
For an old game, there's not really any music, but when there is, it's good, it's eerie, and it's like, oh, what is that? And it felt like something was coming around your, around your shoulder to grab you. It's that good. It's quite scary sometimes. It felt like a Resident Evil game for its time, okay? Cinematics, definitely. Uh, the gameplay, yeah, felt like a Resident Evil game, but very, very cheap for its own time of game. But still, I love it. Hopefully you guys do love it too. Number 13, Resident Evil Revelation 1. Way better than number 2, to be honest. Way better. You get to play as Jill Valentine. Thankfully, we haven't seen her in a long time. With a new character and also... Wow! Once again, it's in a ship, to be honest. You do get yourself playing as Wesker as well for a little bit in um, in the um, cold. In the it's like Antarctic area. But mostly in the ship and everything. And I do like it because it felt like Dead Aim. But way better. There's no zombies, to be honest. It is like these weird sucking creatures that pretty much like suck your head off and rip them out or something. It's very confusing for the story, but I understand it very well because... Excuse me. It's pretty much based after Resident Evil 3, if I remember. And oh my god, it was a good story, to be honest. Because if you bypass the confusion bits, it's very good. It felt like a Resident Evil game, it looked like a Resident Evil game, the controls were good and the soundtrack was good when it was playing. Sometimes it was quiet because it was anticipating what was going to happen, but when the monsters come up, come forth and get you, or there's a cinematic, the music really does pay off a lot. Number 12, Resident Evil Zero. Now, I like this game and I don't like this game. The controls is a main reason because fixed cameras. Okay, I know that, I know that because of the cameras, but that's the only minor about it. So, the music, when it's on, it's good. When it's not on, it's anticipated. That's why I liked about the music and everything. Sometimes when it's quiet, it needs to be quiet. If there, if there needs to be music, there is music. It felt like a Resident Evil game. It looked like a Resident Evil game. The storyline was good because it was pretty much getting yourself prepared for Resident Evil 1, which I like it because you didn't have a clue what happened to uh, Bravo Team because you were, um, you were with Alpha Team. Was it Alpha or Bravo? It was one of the two. I keep, keep getting mixed up on which one it was. Um... You get to play as Rebecca Chang, and you get to play as Billy, and uh, wow, them two are such a great team together. And it's, to me, that's one of the best teams out there for Resident Evil games. I'm not saying they're better than um, Chris, um, Chris and Jill and uh, Leon and Claire, but you can't see anything else. I say they're actually better than um, Jill and Carlos, to be honest. They're way better than them too. So pretty much that's my number 12. Number 11, Resident Evil Code Veronica, or Veronica X, wherever country you're from. Story, good. Really do like it. It's a bit, pretty much a story of Claire Redfield looking for Chris Redfield, her brother. And she goes into this Umbrella Corporation warehouse to look for him. And turns out she gets caught and gets arrested. And gets sent into this remote island that looks like Sean Shant Redemption, to be honest. And then it turns out the whole place is flooded with zombies all of a sudden. And your main mission is to get out and find Chris. You meet another fellow member called uh, Steve. But at the end of the day, it's a good story to understand and follow. And it's about a new virus. It does have zombies in it. But it's mainly known for having these insect type of um, viruses called Codronica. It's like an insect type of virus. It's quite good. It looked like a Resident Evil game. It felt like a Resident Evil game. Soundtrack was good. And putting the elements of opera in it was really good for... A good shout out for the game. It was a new type of music genre form, and I think it worked very much. To control and like I said, the controls were better. Even though they still have fixed cameras sometimes, but when it does, they work smoother. I like that a lot. And that is all I've got time for today, people. Because then we're going to be moving on to number ten. So hopefully you guys enjoy this video. At the moment, this is the end of part one. Make sure you leave a like, subscribe, comment down below, and tell me what is what is going to be my number one favourite Resident Evil game. And do you agree with the list at the moment? Make sure you comment down below and tell me what you think. The people on Studio goes to you guys for subscribing, and I'll see you guys tomorrow for the next part. Cheerio!